prayer as well. I would like Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us into another day and bringing us together for another meeting to go over the word, to learn more about you because we want to be your friend and closer to you. Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, giving us uh, health and sense enough to know that it's you that's in charge, that we have to follow you and walk in your footsteps of leading us down the right way. We thank you for whatever blessings that you've given us, and we ask that you forgive us of any sins that we've done knowingly or unknowingly. In this we pray. Hallelujah. 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 So let it be. Hallelujah. Shalom, Annie. Y'all, how you doing? Shalom, Mike. I'm doing good. Doing good, man. I took my locks out again. Really? <laughs> After almost five years. <laughs> you, you cut them? No. I, well, I did cut them some, but I kind of, I picked them out. And then I'm... I cut them, but I'm about to rock a little short, little curly style for a while. <laughs> Going back to the fro. Okay, I can see. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do that for a little bit and then uh, see where I go from there. I didn't, this set of locks for some reason were like, had a lot of buildup. So, um, yeah. So this set of locks, I wasn't really, I really loved them. They were long and stuff, but, um, it, you know, just, 34 years old, time for a change, I felt like. <laughs> so, but everything is good. Children are good. I'm good. Um, you know, the family's good. My mom's good. Can't, I don't have no complaints. The most high has been good. That's good to hear. Definitely good to hear. How, how the family doing? They're doing good. They hear you. Just chilling. Shalom, Shelly. <laughs> hey, Ariel. Up here battling this little Canada wildfire smoke that's in Chicago. Shalom. <laughs> it's like real smoky out there, you said? It is. No, Shelly said shalom to you. I'll probably, you probably heard me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shalom, sis. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I figured I figured you didn't hear me. Yeah, I was I heard some talking and then I was just I didn't even hear you say slow. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. I'm here cooking. Uh what you cooking, girl? <laughs> um, I'm making this um this vegetarian pasta. Oh, okay. Yeah. I I did a little lazy today. I got some chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Happens. Yeah. But yes, it's, it's, you, you can smell it a little bit. Shelly says she can't smell it, but I smell it as soon as I step outside. It just smell like leaves burning. We mm. we getting it we getting it down here in North Carolina, man. It made it that far. Yeah, we were getting the haze uh, last week, man. And I was like, well, what's up? Because you know, it had been raining, and then after it rained, we got this haze in the air, and Exactly. So, yeah, that's it. It's just it's just catching uh, uh you know a cloud system, you know, wind system, and shooting down here. Exactly. It's more like it's more like burning leaves. But you know, when you start thinking about that, man, you can see how a, a fire on part of the earth can can cover the sun, make the sun dark, as it says in the scripture. You can see that stuff. It's like he's showing you little examples of what it is like a birth pain, you know. Mm -hmm. These things, these things happening, man. And so when something big happens on the earth or an explosion or a big fire, you know, it's going to cover, it's going to be in the whole atmosphere. You know? I see it at night. I, I don't really be out in the daytime because I'm working in the house in the day, but at night, 
when I've been stepping outside, I could see the haze like covering the moon. It uh, it almost looked like a little, like a like a baby cloud a little bit, but it's a clear sky. But you are correct; it is a haze, and it just smell like it smell like leaves burning. I, where I grew up, at people, all the neighbors burnt their leaves, so I know that smell distinctively. And it just smelled like leaves burning. Um, they got the yeah. water up out here to where the kids ain't even supposed to be outside no longer than like thirty minutes. Yeah, we don't know. So, have they put the fire out, or what's the deal on it? Has anybody seen about what's going on with the fire in Canada? I think it's still burning. Yeah, hmm. they have. Last I checked, they had over four hundred independent fires. Like the fires are stretching from one one coast of of Canada all the way to the other coast, like from the Atlantic to the Pacific. That whole country for on real, fire. for real, mm -hmm. for real. Mm -hmm. You know. It ain't but about 50 million people in Canada. Right. It's a you lot know, of like, forest there. It's, yeah, they it's a lot of forest. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They say Canada got like the fifth, the fifth largest forest in the world. Like mm. behind the Amazon and the Congo and those, like the big rainforest. Canada got one of the biggest forests in the world. Like I think it's like third or fourth or something like that. Something up. It's in the top five. Mm -hmm. But yeah. It's on fire from from it's stretching that fire is stretching from one end to the other, and that smoke that smoke is reaching all the way to Europe. Man, yeah, it's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know, if you look at the Earth on a circle on a flat disc like a frisbee, Europe is just right. It's not. Yeah, it's not like it's it's not, it's, not like, it's, it's not like it's, it's not like the, it's not like what they think it is. What you think it is. You know, it's it's just not the same. You know, it's close. That's an interesting way to look at that. Mm -hmm. If you look at that U that UN map, right? The whole the whole the whole edge of it is the Arctic Circle. They probably, you know, something. So they probably got it over in Serbia, going towards Japan and all that too. If you think of Alaska and all of that being connected, yeah, 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 because they've got all of that. They've got they've got uh, China. And uh, Russia looking huge, but the huge, the largest continent is Africa, right? So it, it they've got that looking, that landmass looking really, really huge, you know. And if you, you know, it's it's not just it's not what we think. It's just so many, so much of a deception. We've been lied to so many times, man. Until we don't know whether we come or going. These people, something else. I have a question for you, and time scholars. Doesn't scripture say that um, a third of the trees are going to be destroyed, that the, mm -hmm. four, the angels of the four corners of the earth are being held back until the people of Almighty Yah are going to be sealed, right? Mm -hmm. Or do we have yeah. that mixed up? No, I think that's one of the... Um, I think it's a trumpet. I'm, I'm, it's a, is it a trumpet? or it's, a, it's not a bowl. It's one of them trumpets, ain't it? It's a trumpet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I got it. Um yeah, I mean it's 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 like you know, to 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 track some of this stuff, almost a lot of this stuff has been happening. You know, right. um, you know, um, you know, a lot of this stuff has been happening and um, you know, th th there is this thing that she's talking about being sealed, and that just that just shows you that the most important thing that we could be doing, just like this Bible study tonight, is finding out what Yah wants us to do and not forsaking it. Because, you know, Satan will come at you every day. Man, you got this class tonight. You know, Satan will play with you on that. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you know, even though you know you want to go, you like, you know, it sure would be nice to sleep tonight, wouldn't it? No, I need to see what's up with my brothers and sisters. You know, I need, them, I need, I need their prayers. They need my prayers. I need to know. I need to hear their voice. Because... One day we ain't gonna be able to hear each other's voice. Mm. We're gonna have, we're gonna be on our own in our own groups in our area groups. True, and we won't be able to get back to this. Y'all will we'll just we, mm, mm, right. You know, so it's just one of those things that we've got to, you know, um, cherish and cool. you know, and be responsible towards each other, and you know, and 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 just uh, don't let Satan talk you out of it because it's always a blessing every time you 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 do this reading. It's always oh, something good. It is always good. It's always good. It's yeah. even good to hear the 
here, even here, you know, the little children say hallelujah. That's a that's a beautiful hallelujah. thing. We don't even, we don't even think about that. That's a beautiful thing, man. Just to hear children being raised up in an admonition of this. When you see children now that don't even know what sex they are, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, but we know we 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 know we know who we are. We know who we are. That's funny you say that because when we was with you highlighting them yesterday, Ariel told them shalom, which is rare. She don't really say shalom mm -hmm. to nobody. And when she said shalom, Yale said that like we really raise the children in the truth. That's right. She told them shalom. Yeah. It was and, funny and though, but she yeah, told and, them shalom. <laughs> always, always think about your children. Always think about the children, Shelly. And and y'all always think about the children. Don't never think that they're secondary. And I know y'all don't, but they are. If you think about children, children to me, you're thinking about Jerusalem. You know, you're not you you you're gonna get back. You're gonna get back there. If you do the things that, that are right in your life, your children are gonna get back there. But if you start slipping and sliding, it's gonna be rough for your children to get there. You know? And you want them to, to you don't want them to inherit this foolish, this foolishness, man. These people in this government, they are actually we actually see people in a delusion right now. In the whole MAGA thing and just all of this stuff. It's just a delusion. When people are saying stuff and you know that they're not they're not looking at the facts they just going along with a narrative and they listen to a strong liar it's a delusion it's it's a sorcerer that's a sorcerer talking to people and they believe in this sorcerer and the witchcraft it's just influence and people want to believe it because if it, it feels like they're going to be able to achieve what they want instead of you know knowing that the judgment is coming against all of the nations except the house of israel it's coming against every nation and people in the nation can come out individually Every nation gonna nation, get judged. Right? No, right. ain't no nation, nation gonna be nation. safe. How about that's true. And to your point, um, the cult to Elizabeth is Revelation eight and six, and the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of the trees were burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. So that is like prophecy being fulfilled, or at least it's a sign of it. Um, but hallelujah, it's a lot going on. That's why you are correct. We got to cherish the moments to be able to study tour with each other, but also, you know, keep setting aside time to do it alone, um, to pray and just build on our relationship with the most high. Yah. As we go into the book of Yasher, we finished chapter 61 last week. And, um, at the end of the chapter, verse 24 says, and the children of, 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 uh, Chittim, which is, we, you know, typically associated with ancient Greece, Rome, Italy, that area, saw the valor of Zepho. Remember, he left the king Angius of Africa and went to uh, Europe, basically, because he was not feeling that Angius wouldn't go fight with Egypt and the children of Israel. It said, and the children of Chittim resolved that they made Zepho king over them, and he became king over them. And while as he reigned, they went to subdue the children of Tubal, and all the surrounding islands. So he had a big impact on this part of European quote unquote history. And their king Zepho went at their head and they made war with Tubal in the islands and they subdued them. And when they returned from the battle, they renewed his government for him. And they built for him a very large palace for his royal habitation and seat. And they made a large throne for him. And Zepho reigned over the whole land of Chittim and over the land of Italy, of Italia, 50 years. So it's calling it Italy there. Um, you know, ironically, as I was just reading that, it's talking about this very large throne and seat. I won't be surprised if that is somewhere in modern day Rome today, um, where he was sitting anciently, but we looked up the Lacedaemonians who trace back to the ancient Spartans in Greece, which are always all have always been considered the warrior tribe of the ancient Greeks. Um, and that even makes sense that they would be descendants of Zepho, descendants of Esau. But as we start uh, Yasher chapter 62, <clears throat> verse 1 says, And in that year, being the 79th year of the Israelites going down to Mitzrayim, died Reuben, the son of Jacob, in the land of Mitzrayim. Reuben was 125 years old when he died and they put him into a coffin and he was given into the hands of his children. And in the 80th year died his brother Dan 
he was 120 years at his death and he was also put into a coffin and given into the hands of his children. And in that year died Kusham, king of Edom, and after him reigned Hadad, the son of Badad, for 35 years. And in the 81st year died Issachar, the son of Jacob in Mizraim. And Issachar was 122 years old at his death, and he was put into a coffin in Mizraim and given into the hands of his children. And in the 82nd year died Asher, his brother. He was 123 years old at his death, and he was placed in the coffin in Mitzrayim and given into the hands of his children. And remember, it said that once the, the Pharaoh died in Egypt, his son started to, you know, inflict hardships on our people. And we see at the same time, while this is starting to unfold, um, the patriarchs are passing on. And in the 83rd year died Gad. He was 125 years old at his death, and he was put into a coffin in Mitzrayim and given into the hands of his children. And it came to pass in the 84th year, that is the 50th year of the reign of Hadad, son of Badad, king of Edom, that Hadad assembled all the children of Esau and he got his whole army in readiness, about 400,000 men. And he directed his way to the land of Moab and he, and he went to fight with Moab and to make them tributary to him. And the children of Moab, and it's still continuing, this, this is a history lesson that's given us um, one that's not taught in schools either. And if it is taught in school, it's not using the names Moab and uh, Hadad and Edom. And uh, and even when it talks about Zepho and the wars that they was fighting in Greece and the wars they fought with Africa. No, that's Troy. And and um, um, I can't think of the name. Achilles. And um, this is a history that's not taught. Not like this. And Hadad came into the land, oh, I'm sorry, and the children of Moab heard this thing, and they were very much afraid. And they sent to the children of Midian. So Moab, the children of Lot, sent to Midian, the children of Ibrahim, which they would have known, like, we family. So you already know how that went. Oh, we really family and uh, Esau family, too. But he got this king that's not among, from amongst us. I'm not even sure where Hadad and Badad and them were from. But we need your help, <laughs> They sent to the children of Midian to assist them in the fighting with Hadad. And Hadad came into the land of Moab, and Moab and the children of Midian went out to meet him. And they placed themselves in battle array against him in the field of Moab. And Hadad fought with Moab, and there fell of the children of Moab and the children of Midian many slain ones. About 200,000 men. He killed a lot of them. Him, backed by this Edomite army, killed a lot of the children of Moab. And the battle was very severe upon Moab. And when the children of Moab saw that the battle was sore upon them, they weakened their hands and turned their backs and left the children of Midian to carry on the battle. And the children of Midian knew not the intentions of Moab, but they strengthened themselves in battle and fought with Hadad and all his hosts and all Midian fell before him. And Hadad smote all Midian with heavy smiting and he slew them with the edge of the sword. He left none remaining of those who came to assist Moab. See, this makes sense now. Now, just think in this history lesson, this is making sense why when Moses gets to Midian, it's not really that many of them. It's Jethro, his daughters. Uh, he can't find husbands for his daughters, probably because most of these men have died. I don't know how many of the men of Midian are around, and he may not even want to marry his daughter off to any old body. But this is kind of helping make sense why that's kind of like the situation that's implied when Moshe gets to. Um, Midian when he leaves Egypt and when all the children and when all the children of Midian had perished in battle and the children at Moab had escaped Hadad made all Moab at that time tributary to him and they became under his hand and they gave a yearly tax as it was ordered and Hadad turned and went back to the land and at the revolution of the year when the rest of the people oh no at the revolution of the year, when the rest of the people of Midian that were in the land heard that all their brethren had fallen in battle with Hadad for the sake of Moab, because the children of Moab had turned their backs in battle and left Midian to fight, then five of the princes of Midian resolved with the rest of their brethren who remained in their land to fight with Moab to avenge the cause of their brethren. And the children of Midian sent to all their brethren, the children of the east, and all their brethren, all the children of Keturah, K 
came to assist Midian to fight with Moab. And we know Keturah is Abraham's wife after Sarah dies. And he has, I believe there's a jockton amongst those kids. Um, Midian comes from those kids. And they're calling them the children of the East. Uh, and the son, no, 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 that ain't what I'm looking for. Uh, now the sons of Keturah, Abraham's concubine, she bears Zimram, Yakshan, Midan, Midian, Ishbak, Shua, and the sons of Yakshan, Yakshan, Sheba, and Dedan, which this Sheba could possibly be the Sheba who came to see Solomon, which changes the narrative of her being uh, a Cushite slash Ethiopian. Now, we have to go back and read that and see exactly what they say um, at that story. But um, just trying to, just giving a brief thing about how many sons Abraham had with her. He had one, two, three, four, five, six sons by Keturah, which all more than likely would have went on to become nations. And they're calling them the children of the east. And we're already with Moab, east of the Jordan. So we're looking at, um, you know, just based off how things are presently set, um, understanding that that may not be set in stone. But we're looking at where you would be looking in the areas of like Afghanistan and India and Pakistan and and would have all, which is why I believe it's a strong possibility that the people you see over there today who all have like European features are a mix with Yafeth because these people I don't believe would look like them. Not especially not these. These are like the direct descendants between Abraham and Keturah. I don't believe they would have carried the same features that you see on what we typically call an Arabian today, knowing that there are also darker complected Arabians in the Middle East and they kind of play them the same way they play the darker collect. um, the descendants of the slaves that's in the Caribbean and definitely in South America, like, you know, they there, but when you see videos and, and commercials of, of tourism and all that to these places to come travel, they don't ever show you them. Like Brazil is a prime example. As much as they pump Brazil, come visit Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. If you didn't look into it, you wouldn't even know that slaves got off in Brazil because you never in any commercial or anything advertised in Brazil, they never speak on the slave population that came there. And we know now from history that it was the biggest drop-off place. There are a lot of Israelites that live in Brazil. But Midian went to their cousins, like, look, we need help with Lot, son. And all of them would know themselves to be family. I think that's another key to this as well. But 16, and the children of Moab heard this thing and they were greatly afraid that all the children of the East had assembled together against them for battle. And they, the children of Moab, sent the memorial to the land of Edom to Hadad, the son of Badad, saying, Come now unto us and assist us, and we will smite Midian. For they all assembled together and have come against us with all their brethren, the children of the east, to battle to avenge the cause of Midian that fell in battle. And Hadad, son of Badad, king of Edom, went forth with his whole army and went to the land of Moab to fight with Midian. And Midian and the children of the east fought with Moab in the field of Moab, and the battle was very fierce between them. And Hadad smote all the children of Midian and the children of the east with the edge of the sword. And Hadad at that time delivered Moab from the hand of Midian and those that remained of Midian and of the children of the east fled before Hadad and his army. And Hadad pursued them to their land and smote them with a very heavy slaughter and the slain fell in the road. So Hadad came and helped Moab again. Um, and they killed a lot of these Midianites and the children of the east. And Hadad delivered Moab from the hand of Midian, for all the children of Midian had fallen by the edge of the sword. And Hadad turned and went back to his land. So it tells us again, this, this also once again can explain why when Moshe got to Jethro, and I think Jethro's name is different than Jasher, but it explains how when they got there to him, why um, when they got there to him, this would explain why uh, the numbers were so small or much smaller, I should say, um, when Moshe made it there. that it, 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 it implies that it wasn't that many Midianites. 
And from that day forth, the children of Midian hated the children of Moab because they had fallen in battle for their sake. And there was a great and mighty enmity between them all the days, more than likely probably still to this day. And all that were found in, of Midian in the road in the land of Moab perished by the sword of Moab. And all that were found of Moab in the road of the land of Midian perished by the sword of Midian. So they got on. That almost sound like gangs in the hood today. Like if we catch any of them in our hood, they got to go. So it's all like they got on and we catch anybody from Moab and anything that Midian owned, we killing them and Moab was on the same. Thus did Midian unto Moab and Moab unto Midian for many days. So we see that's, we, we kind of see the, the, the makings of gang warfare early. And it came to pass at the time that Yehuda, the son of Jacob, died in Egypt in the 86th year of Jacob's going down to Egypt. And Yehuda was 129. So if it was the 86th year and he was 129, that mean he was 43 when they went down there. Okay. And they embalmed him and put him into a coffin and he was given into the hands of his children. And in the 89th year died Nephtali. He was 132 years old. Let me see. He was 120. Okay. He was 132 years old. And it came to pass in the 91st year of, y of Yasharal. Um, and it came to pass in the 91st year of the, of Yasha, of the Israelites going down to Mitzrayim, that is the 30th year of the reign of Zepho, the son of Eliphaz. And it tells us he reigned 50 years in Italia or Italy, the son of Esau over the children of Chittim, the children of Africa came upon the children of Chittim to plunder them as usual, but they had not come upon them for these 13 years. Remember, it told us that when Zepho was with Angius, they had like, you know, fought a, like a little war and conquered some of Chittim and the people there would pay them tribute. Well, not at Zepho there. This is the first time that the the, the, the children of Africa, they call, and I'm not sure what nation they would that would be today. But, and like I say, I know in, in stories, this would typically talk about Northern Africa and the range of Egypt. So um, today, just to, I would say Mali, Libya, um, maybe even going around to Nigeria, um, kind of like that part of Africa is how it's, how it's stated, you know, but, you know, we live in a world where up is down and down is up. Like some people might tell us ancient Europe is really China and what we call it Asia is Europe. Like I, that's why I don't get too much into them type of stories now, because once we start to picking and choosing where we're going to put places, you have to fit everywhere else around it. And if you're going to do that, if you're going to pick up that study, you got to be willing to go in and do that work. For example, if we're going to say that Israel is, let's say, Tanzania, right? Which I ain't never heard nobody say, but I know people put it in different places in the more interior of mainland Africa. If you're going to say that, cool. But then you have to adjust Babylon. You have to adjust Egypt. You have to adjust the relationship and how these nations are traveling and going to fight in Chittim, which we, which through history has been considered to be the ancient Greeks. Like, you can't just say Israel is in Zimbabwe. You got to say, well, then Babylon is really where Nigeria was at. And then Egypt is really south. Like, you have to, it's a big undertaking to do that respectfully. And that's why I kind of like, just lightly go around that subject with respect, because I understand it could be possible, though. But to make it make sense to me, you're going to have to tell me where all of these places that's in relation to Israel and the Bible is at. And that is a very big undertaking for somebody to take if you're going to do that the right way. Um, so when I speak about it, I just speak about it based off the map and how we know it, understanding, though. And I say this to you all to keep an open mind to it, too, because um, you never know any day, any of that may change. I just ain't seen that day yet. Now I ain't seen a study big enough to place everything everywhere. You can't just move Israel. You got to show me where the Euphrates is really at. You got to show me where it's a lot or what would be. It's it's just a big undertaking. It's bigger than just saying the Congo is Israel. No, you can't just say that because the Bible is a puzzle, right? And we know that all this has to fit. And that's why that's what makes Yah so amazing. And that's why the word of Yah can't be changed because all this has to fit. And it's easy, to, it's easy to change a word 
or even mistakenly change a word, not even being malicious in a translation. It's hard to change everything because first and foremost, Yah has not allowed any man to know everything to even know where to begin to change it all. <laughs> so it, it's it's a big undertaking. I respect the study, but it is a big undertaking. Verse 26, and they came to them in that year and Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, went out to them with the sound with some of his men and smote them desperately. So now Zepho, who was just fighting with Africa, nah, nah, I'm actually curious. I don't even know where to begin to try to search this, but what nation would they be considering him? Um, but Zepho, who was once an ally, who was really mad at them because they wouldn't go into Egypt and fight with Israel with him, for him, whatever. Now he's smoting them when they come into to 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 uh Chittim, Rome, ancient, but well before probably even it was considered Rome. They called it Roma and this or Italy. He's smoting the troops of Africa, which also remember when all this first kicked off with Esau at the at the burial of Jacob, Angius, the king of Africa, he sent troops to assist Edom. Yes, that go to show you why you got to watch your friends. We, I once was sending troops to help you when your brethren was whooping y'all tail. Now you up here with these Europeans and you helping them. Like you really foul, Zepho, but you know, that's how it go. And the troops of Africa fled from before Zepho and the slain fell before him. And Zepho and his men pursued them going on and smiting them until they were near unto Africa. So now based off what we know, and, and see, this is a prime example of what I just said. Because for this to be different, then we would have to show where Chittim, which is ancient Greece, was at. And it's just, that's just, listen, he smote them until they made it back to Africa. Understanding that they would have never called what we call Africa today. They would have never called it that either, though. So that could be in play, too. Um, but anyway, and Angius, king of Africa, heard the thing which Zepho had done, and it vexed him exceedingly. And Angius was afraid of Zepho all the days. I bet you was. I didn't house you. You was a slave to them Israelites down in Egypt when Joseph was alive. I didn't house you, respected you, knowing that Esau was your father and we was in league with Esau. So I'm really done received you like a prince in my land. You know you had a high ranking role because you had my ear too often to be trying to get me to go to war. And now you get up here with these people and you helping them. So, hey, Angius, no, if worse come to worse. I definitely got to watch you because you didn't let it be known. You would kill me. You would try me. And you bogus. Because not only did I help you, I lost soldiers. Sending them to the burial in your cold when your daddy, when your granddaddy was killed, which was Esau. I lost soldiers sending them up there to fight with you against Israel. I think he did it twice we read that he sent them there when they was fighting Israel and lost. And that's how you repay me. Hallelujah. Any questions or comments about Yasher chapter 26? More of a history lesson. Um, no, I just, um, I agree with you on um, al Kabulan is what everybody says Africa is. And I mean, no, it's not, it wasn't called Africa. They were called al Kabulan, and they were saying that Facts. all of all of this stuff is, you know, all of these different places are in Kenya and all of that. And so I was looking at this one thing one night so if you look at the geography, if you could, if you pull up the geography of Israel, Jordan, uh, Babylon, which is where Iran, Iraq is, mm -hmm. and then you go down, in order to get to Egypt, you've got to go through Israel. Yes. This is why we always, if, if Egypt is, that's why we go down into Egypt. So, you know, if, if any time that these nations went back and forth, they had to especially if they were, you know, we were in power, they had to pay tribute to come into, come through our land. Just as you see over in the, uh, the, uh, the book of, uh, uh, of Judges, uh, I'm not Judges, but the book of Joshua, where we would say we'll pay for water, we'll pay for food, you know, all of that, we'll buy it, you know. So that's when, when you've got these two opposing countries and you know that Egypt is where it, Egypt is, or Mitzrayim is where Mitzrayim is, because it's got you know the pyramids and it's there. You see what I'm saying? So when you know if it's going to be in another place, you know if the Bible Holy Land is not on that little strip of land right there on the Mediterranean, it's really hard to. You'd have to change up everything, and I really, 
appreciate you saying that because that's you have to go back and rewrite everything. You have to you rewrite know, everything. You would have to rewrite everything. Where, where Europe is at because of their relationship mm -hmm. with Rome and them coming down and mm -hmm. Alexander the Great and the Greeks coming to the land. You would have to rewrite and ease some of the nations up here that I would meant to say could possibly be what they would call Angus, and, King of Africa, uh, Libya, Tunisia, Algeria. And as you see, these places are at that time, these places may have connected to where you can get to these places by foot with bridges. You feel me? Mm -hmm. um, but to your point, and, you would have to rewrite all of this. Babylon, which is considered Iraq, would have to be mm -hmm. in Africa somewhere. That's Iran, right. Iran, which is considered right. Persia, would have to be in Africa somewhere. That's right. Uh, and, 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 and everybody I, I was coming to down it. to that little strip. Everybody before had to come you, to that little strip. You know, go ahead. you go ahead. say that, I, I stay open to the conversation, understanding that, you know, a lot mm -hmm. has been changed. But for, for that to be a serious conversation, somebody's going to have to take. That's a really big undertaking to take on. To be right. Of all that. I, I don't think it's impossible. If it's true, I know it ain't impossible because the Ruach HaKadosh will lead us to all true. But right. somebody going to have to put in a little bit more work than just saying, well, they was calling Ghana the kingdom of the Jews. So right. <laughs> no, it's right. going to have to be a lot deeper than that. You got to prove where a lot of things was at. Mm -hmm. Where's sure Moab did. in Africa? Where's Esau and Mount Seir in right. Africa? You right. have to prove a lot of things. Where was Haran? That Terranum went to. Where is the Tower of Babel? Because it would have to be in mainland Africa if that was true. That's like, right. It's a, it's a lot, and I ain't saying it ain't. It's possible, but for that to be for for, for I won't say for me to take it serious because I take it serious. But for me to really take some time out of as busy a schedule I got to consider it, no, nah, you're gonna have to show me somebody who done went crazy with the history. And right, and right, too hockey. And too, like when you think about it, when you go down to the to the first century, uh, the first century, you know, uh, um, a, you know, assembly, they're dealing in the seven assemblies in that whole little stretch right there in Turkey. All those assemblies are right there in Turkey, so you know that that was the dispersion of us from 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 the um, from the Assyrians and from the Babylonians. We just moved over there into that part of Europe. You All see what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, because that's that's where we were going to get our people. Those seven assemblies were right there, and it was our people in those seven assemblies. Of course, there were there were uh, there were people there from the Mediterranean area of the earth, but it's also our people in these seven assemblies, which is the last thing that was written. You know, uh, Smyrna, Laodicea, uh, uh, Philadelphia, all those places are in Turkey. All those places are in that 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 in Turkey. If you you know so. If you move Israel to Ethiopia, then all those places would have to be in this area somewhere here. Walking yeah. distance. Chad, like, you know. Mm -hmm. Walking distance. And the, and, and the interesting thing about scripture, it gives you the distance because it would say a Shabbat day's journey, which means mm -hmm. some of the places took a week to walk. If, 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 if from Ethiopia to Turkey on foot, man, that might take a month, maybe even longer. And I key, when you look at when you look at Chad, Sudan, Libya, Algeria, and Niger, that's desert, yo. And these places are that, huge. They're huge, man. They are huge. They just they under they they don't they don't they don't uh show them in their capacity in the European maps. They already have they they the the um there's the that whole Psalms 83. It, it's it's so encompassing about you know it has to diminish everything you know it's a plot and a scheme to diminish everything and to distort everything you know so yeah I'm I'm with you on that and I was looking at this thing about uh you know I don't know how true uh, YouTube we uh, uh not YouTube but I was looking at Aegeus the ruler over Africa and and you know so this was does this showing that he's the son of Jasher and the son of a uh, son of a uh, 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 a son of um, um, uh, Yefeth, or he's a son of Ham. I, I because they they so they looking at they, Ham, look like they look like they look like they trying to say he's 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 part of Yefeth, you know. Which would change Aegeus. His. And the thing about it is Aegeus, and then you got the a GNC. You see what I'm saying? We don't know how so, they done changed up all this stuff, man. It's the GNC. We don't know. Huh. The Aegean Sea is supposed to be by Greece. That's the Aegean. 
So if you like, so and then you get this name Aegeus here. You know, you know. So it's 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 um. If you look up that, I mean, I'm like, that's a very similar name. I don't want to take take the class off on a tangent. I'm sorry, but I, I mean, you know, we don't. These people are not one thing that most people are not doing. Uh, I know that is the division after Noah got off the ark. He told it that they all. I think they they had a meeting and separated everything. They were given certain things, but everybody didn't go where they were supposed to go. No, most definitely not. That's part of the that was part of the punishment mm -hmm. because the Canaanites, which were Ham's children, um, came in our land. I, I think we read that in Joshua at the beginning, or it might mm -hmm. be in Jubilees, or one of them, where Ham was like, "No, that land ain't y'all's. It's Shem's." And the Canaanites was like, "We taking that." Right. They that was a conscious effort by them to say, "No, we know this ain't ours, but we taking this." Nimrod would have been the same though. Nimrod and them in the tower were Babel just saying this here and I was here in ba or Iraq and all of that. He knew that this, wherever it was at, it would have been part of a plot of Shem. And Nimrod right. was like, we taking this. So Nimrod and them would have been um, wrong in claiming that slot of land as well. That's right. But moving on. Mm -hmm. Anything else anybody want to add to this history lesson? This is why stuff like this is good, though, because it 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 will help build on or take away um, some of these things. That's why we do this, and it's not about necessarily proving anything right or wrong. It's about trying to build up on some of these theories, some of these ideas, um, and be led by the Most High Yah in doing so. That's kind of what it is, but it, that's a big undertaking. Like I say, that's like, that's a really big undertaking, man. Something that like something I see taking somebody 20, 30, 50 years to really be able to flesh it all out. And, and you know, y'all might be sitting back like you shouldn't even be worried about that. <laughs> Make sure you can get back to it. <laughs> That's your only worry. Make sure you do what you gotta do to get back to it. You ain't taking yourself back anyway. I'm a, I'm the one gonna carve open the path for you. That's right. That's right. You shouldn't even be worried about, but I always think that whatever, whatever, just speaking for myself, because I, 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 and this is why I respect it, because I too have a lot of really big ideas about things in tour. And in my own mind, I always caveat my own big ideas. Like, I can't get too caught up into that because y'all may tell me in the end, like, why would you even waste your time trying to figure all that out? That wasn't even for you. So, like, I try to keep it in perspective. But I respect it, though. I, I have to say, I do respect it, though. Jasher chapter 63. Looks like it's more of a history lesson. And in the 93rd year died Levi, the son of Jacob. In the 93rd year died Levi, the son of Jacob, in Mitzrayim. And Levi was 137 years old when he died. And they put him into a coffin and he was given into the hands of his children. It's key to remember why I keep saying he was given into the hands of his children, too, because I've always believed, and if one of you think or, or understand something different, let me know. But I believe when we left Egypt, that all of, we took all of these patriarchs with us and buried them in, in, in the promised land that Yah had given us, which means that we would have carried them all through the wilderness for the 40 years as well, which is a, another really uh, interesting study that can be taken and how that all was going on and how was we preserving these bodies. Um, verse 2. And it came to pass after the death of Levi, when all Egypt saw that the sons of Jacob, the brethren of Yosef, were dead. So Levi died last. 137, okay. All the Egyptians began to afflict the children of Jacob and to embitter their lives from that day unto the day of their going forth from Mitzrayim. And they took from their hands all the vineyards and fields which Yosef had given unto them and all the elegant houses in which the people of Yasharal lived. And all the fat of Mitzrayim, the Egyptians took all from the sons of Jacob in those days. Now think, we know we was rich. We were a very well-off people, the best plot of land, great cattle. You know, Yosef, not Yosef, but Jacob, but I'm sure he taught his children, was like one of the best at um, um, raising cattle and causing them to multiply. We always been great farmers. These vineyards and all that were plush. And then just the gold and everything that had been accumulated from Yosef, uh, that Jacob already had it said they took it all and it makes that scripture we read it on Shabbat when we were going through Isaiah where would it be when we were going through Isaiah 
Um, and it makes this make even more sense why y'all saying this has to happen again. In Isaiah chapter nine, verse five, it says, and this was in the Septuagint, it said, for they shall compensate for every garment that has been acquired by deceit and all raiment with restitution and they shall be willing even if they were burned by fire. So one way or the other, you're going to get these people back everything you stole by deceit. Now, in this Isaiah, he's talking about the, the second time. He's, he's leading into the second gathering um, of us on a worldwide scale. But we see this happen here. As it says here that when all of the sons died, they they basically stole and 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 um through trickeration, I'm sure it was through a, mul a multitude of level of means, they stole all the elegant houses in which the people of Israel lived. You know, everything that we had that we had accumulated, which was the top of everything, um, they stole. But we we understand, you no, know, just looking forward that when Moses had delivered, when Yah sent Moses to deliver his people, um, and he brought our ancestors out of Egypt. They gave all of this back and some, right? And that fulfills, in my opinion, that Isaiah 9, 5, every garment stolen by deceit will be repaid with restitution. And the hand of all of Egypt became more grievous in those days against the children of Yasharal. And, and something else I find interesting here is I always felt like when I thought about the captivity in Egypt the first time that they would have at least rated, waited until Ephraim and Manasseh was dead, especially considering that this told us it was the son of the Pharaoh who Yosef gave a dream to, who started this. He would have had grown up with Ephraim and Manasseh. No, they was close because Yosef and his father was too close. And he, it ain't say they passed and he kicked this up already. And the hand of all Mitzrayim became more grievous in those days against the children of Yasharal. And the Egyptians injured the Israelites until the children of Israel were weary of their lives on account of the Egyptians. That sound like us today. That sound like us today. The oppressors injured the Israelites in 2023 until the children of Israel were wearied of their lives. And that's Deuteronomy 28 too. You, you, at nighttime, you'll wish it was morning and in the morning, you'll wish it was night. And it came to pass in those days in the 102nd year of Israel's going down into um down into Egypt that Pharaoh king of Egypt died so this was his son so this is the son of him of the of the Pharaoh who 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 Yosef uh interpreted the dream for and Milo Milo maybe his son reigned in his stead and all the mighty men of Mitzrayim and all that generation which knew Yosef and his brethren died in those days so now it's the next generation so it might have even been some people who was like nah i ain't gonna do them like that who still honor yourself but now when this next pharaoh come which is would be the grandson of the pharaoh who yosef interpreted the dream the generation of those elders and the different people who may have had some respect for that still but had died so now you're dealing in a whole nother plane and another generation rose up in their stead, which had not known the sons of Jacob and all the good which they had done to them and all their might in Mitzrayim. Therefore, all Mitz Mitzrayim began from that day forth to embitter the lives of the sons of Jacob and to afflict them with all manner of hard labor because they had not known their ancestors who had delivered them in the days of the famine. And that's how I go today. Um, you know, the uh, God. You just look at our people here today. The farther we get now away from slavery, the least our children know about it now. We, you just see how things change over generations. Um, and this was also from the Most High Yah. Ah. Yah always got his hand on it. <laughs> this was from the Most High Yah. Why? For the children of Israel to benefit them in their latter days in order that all the children of Israel might know the Most High Yah, their Elohim. And in order to know the signs and mighty wonders which Yah would do in Mitzrayim on account of his people, Yasharal, in order that the children of Yasharal might fear Yah, Elohim of their ancestors, and walk in all his ways, 
they and their seed after them all the day. So now we see Yah allowed this to happen so that his glory in the end could be seen. And it was. We know that when Moshe, when Moshe and, and our ancestors come out of Egypt, all of the nations is like, they got an Elohim who fight for them. What's his name? Man, they call him Yah, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, whatever they call him. <laughs> he just told Egypt up. Well, they wasn't doing nothing. You know what I mean? Like, he got the glory, too. And we see that when you read Joshua, as he as we come out, these nations is like, no, don't be playing with them. Melo was 20 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 94 years. So he lived to be 114. He reigned a long, that's a long time for a king to reign, 94 years. He reigned longer than Queen Elizabeth. How old was she? Did she reign for what, 70? <laughs> He outran her. Hey, well, you know, let the conspiracy theorists tell it. Maybe he was getting heart transplants from little black boys. That, uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this man reigned a long time. And all Egypt called his name Pharaoh after the name of his father. As it was their custom to do to every king who reigned over them. And remember. Rekion came from the Tower of Babel, and he was smarter than a lot of these Egyptians. He came from Babylon, and he, remember, was called the first Pharaoh because he used the system to charge people to bury him. Pharaoh would come once a year. He didn't know. When he come, the people complained, and when Pharaoh went to Rekion, Rekion hit him off with a bag, and he was like, that's actually kind of smart to make people pay. Matter of fact, I'm going to point you. You smart. <laughs> And after him, every king became Pharaoh. It's crazy how Jasher gives you this history because now I'm sure in certain channels, some comedic scholar will try to tell me that some hieroglyphs say that Pharaoh really came from some great eagle that flew in off a spaceship. And, you know, I'm sure he would say that. But it could possibly just been as simple as that. <laughs> Verse 10, and at that time, all the troops of Angus, king of Africa, went forth to spread along the land of Chittim as usual for plunder. So he trying to go do it again. You just seen what Zepho did. And you know what? Now that you think about it, he been reigning for a long time, too. And Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, heard their report, and he went forth to meet them with his army. And he fought them there in the road, which kind of reminds you um, we understand that they said it's the Persians in the movie 300, but it kind of reminds you of that. A nation coming from far, trying to do this and that, and the Spartans is fighting them off. Remember, we brought up the Maccabees with the Lacedaemonians say in the book of Maccabees that they're in Greece, and they say, we, from our writings, we see that we are from the stock of Abraham, brothers to the Israelites. Because, and 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 this is me putting two and two together. It don't got to be this, but I believe that they are the descendants of Zepho. And Lacedaemonia, or Lace, yeah, Lacedaemonia, maybe, I may say that wrong, is associated with the island where the Spartans were, which is known to be the warrior tribe in Greece. It would make sense that the warrior tribe in Greece would be the descendants of Esau, who was a hunter slash warrior, or at least he considered himself to be. And Zepho smote the troops of the king of Africa with the edge of the sword and left none remaining of them and not even one returned to his master in Africa. And Angius heard of this, which Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, had done to all his troops, that he had destroyed them. And Angius assembled all his troops, all the men of his land of Africa, a people numerous like the sand of the seashore. So now, Angius is like, you know what? I'm tired of buddy. I done did a lot for you to be up here acting like y'all ain't got to honor this agreement, an agreement that I used to send you to make sure they honor. You a little bogus, Zepho. I used to rock with your granddaddy, but I don't know about you. And Angus sent Lucas, his brother, saying, come to me with all the men and help me to smite Zepho and all the children of Chittim, who had destroyed my men. And Lucas came with his whole army, a very great force to assist Angus, his brother, to fight with Zepho and the children of Chittim. And Zepho and the children of Chittim heard this thing. 
and they were greatly afraid, and a great terror fell upon their hearts. So Zepho was a little scared now. He knew Angus had got the whole continent, as some people would say, to come and fight against him and his brother Lucas. And Zepho also sent a letter to the land of Edom to Hadad, the son of Badad, king of Edom, and all the children of Esau, saying, I have heard that Angius, king of Africa, is coming to us with his brother for battle against us, and we are greatly afraid of him, for his army is very great, particularly as he comes against us with his brother and his army likewise. Now, therefore, come you also up with me and help me, and we will fight together against Angius and his brother Lucas, and you will save us out of their hands. But if not, know you that we shall die. And the children of Esau sent the letter to the children of Chittim and the Zepho, their king, saying, we cannot fight against Angus. Basically, they was like, this king who ain't Esau. Remember, Esau said, we putting the king, we picking kings from other nations to be over us, our brethren came. So this king, like, I ain't coming up there to fight with you. We cannot fight against Angus and his people for a covenant of peace has been between us these many years, of which you should know, Zepho, you Esau. From the days of Bela, Bela, the first king, and from the days of Yosef, the son of Jacob, king of Mitzrayim, with whom we fought on the other side of Jordan, when he buried his father. And when Zepho heard the words of his brethren, the children of Esau, he refrained from them, and Zepho was greatly afraid of Angus. So he like, yo, we about to die. And Angus and Lucas, his brother, arrayed all their forces, about 800,000 men, against the children of Chittim. And all the children of Chittim said unto Zepho, pray for us. So the children of Chittim said unto Zepho. So these Grecians, these Europeans, these sons of Japheth, said unto Zepho, pray for us to the most high, to the, to the most high Elohim of thy ancestors. Peradventure, he may deliver us from the hand of Angus and his army. For we have heard that he is a great Elohim and that he delivers all who trust in him. How would the children of the Grecians know that first off? But B, what made them think that Zepho would do that? Because the line of Esau has shown a disdain for the things that Yah has said to their ancestors from the time of Esau's birth, or at least from the time he sold the birthright. And Zepho heard the words, and Zepho sought Yah, and he said, ain't that something? A son of Esau, Zepho, in Europe, humbled himself and prayed. <laughs> well, that go to show you, man, you got a lot of people talk a lot of junk. They don't believe in none of that, and we ain't the people and nothing. But when they get hectic, first thing they be saying is, God, please save me, don't they? That's what Zepho just did, but he knew better, though. But this is exactly what he doing right here. Oh, Yah, Elohim of Ibrahim, Isaac, my ancestors. This is what Zepho said. This day I know that thou art a true Elohim, and all the gods of the nations are vain and useless. This is what Zepho is saying. He started that off the right way. Remember now this day unto me thy covenant with Ibrahim, our father, which our ancestors related unto us. And do graciously with me this day for the sake of Ibrahim and Isaac, our fathers, and save me and the children of Chittim from the hand of the king of Africa who comes against us for battle. Now, the interesting part is, Yah told Abraham, I'm going to bless the children that come out of your loins are going to bless many nations. He didn't just say Israel. That's interesting that Zepho is kind of keying on that point. I know that you told my grandfather my great great grandfather that no yeah my great yeah my grandfather no you would tell Esau was my grandfather so uh, right, right yeah my great great grandfather I was right I know that you made a covenant with him and even though that covenant didn't come through us it went to your code you told him that through you would bless many nations out of his loins right that's kind of how he going into it showing that he ain't he ain't He's not ignorant of it either. And Yahuwah hearkened to the voice of Zepho on account of Abraham, just like he did Lot, just like he didn't did for a lot of people. 
And he aver- just like he doing for us. <laughs> he ain't wake none of us up because we was perfect. He woke you up because he had a covenant with Abraham. <laughs> Same difference. And Yahuwah hearkened to the voice of Zepho, and he had regarded for him on account of Ibrahim and Yitzhak. And Yah delivered Zepho and the children of Chittim from the hand of Angius and his people. Yah delivered. Ain't that something? We talk all this stuff about what Esau is and what Esau ain't. Esau humbled himself and prayed, and Yah stood up for him. I don't know, man. That kind of go against the way people use these terms today, but we see what's going on with these camps and these outfits. Like the awakening is in disarray on a on a public perception level, but hallelujah to your, every one of you that Yah is keeping you on the path and keeping you focused on the plow and focused on the mark. Because we throw these names around and who can and can get in the kingdom. And right there, I just read, that an Edomite humbled himself and prayed. One who had beef with Israel, but trying to go to war with them his whole life, too. Yah's chosen people, he got a disdain for him. He like, I can't stand none of them niggas. <laughs> and he humbled himself and prayed, and Yah was like, I got you. That say something. I feel like there's something to be learned in that. And Zepho fought Angius and King of Af- the king of Africa and all his people on that day. And Yah gave all the people of Angius into the hands of the children of Chittim. And the battle was severe upon Angius. And Zepho smote all the men of Angius. He said he was 800,000 deep. <laughs> and Lucas, his brother, with the edge of the sword. And there fell from them unto the evening of that day 400,000 men. Yah blessed Zepho. That, that's, a, that's, a, uh, that's a Joshua and them going back into the land prayer. Y'all came and fought for Zepho. An uh, Edomite. Call it what you want, but y'all came and fought for an Edomite. That's, that's a very interesting thing considering the doctrines that float around us today. And when Angius saw that all his men perished, he sent a letter to all the inhabitants of Africa to come to him to assist him in battle. And he wrote in the letter saying, all who are found in Africa, let them come unto me from 10 years old and up, he want to kill everybody. He on a suicide mission. 10 years old and up. Angus, what you trying to do? You trying to destroy the future, huh? Let them all come up unto me. And behold, if he comes not, he shall die. And all that he has with this whole household, the king will take. Like I say, going back to, I didn't close that, did I? I did. No, I did. I did. Going back to this, just based off of this map here. What I see them calling the king of Africa is like all of this. Morocco, Western Sahara, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, all of this may be what they're calling Angius' reign, if it's here. Some of this as well. I just see this being a really big run, but I shouldn't even say all of Libya because I think ancient Egypt might have stretched like off into this range. It was a little bigger, I believe, as well. But be that as it may, he definitely saw him as Abraham's seed and not as some uh, Edomite. Verse 30, and, and, and all the rest of the inhabitants of Africa were terrified at the words of Angus, and there went out of the city about 300,000 men and boys from 10 years upward, and they came to Angus. Angus was wilder. I wouldn't have never said my 10-year-old. We'd have just had a problem. And at the end of 10 days, Angius renewed the battle against Zepho. And the children of Chittim in the battle was very great and strong between them. And from the army of Angius and Lucas, Zepho sent many of the wounded unto his hand, about 2,000 men. And so Sifiter, the captain of the host of Angius, fell in that battle. He lost his top general. And when so Sifiter had fallen, the African troops turned their blacks to flee. And they fled, and Angius and Lucas, his brother, were with them. And Zepho and the children of Chittim pursued them, and they smote them still heavily on the road, about 200, 200 men. And they pursued as, as, as Rubal, the son of Angius, who had fled with his father, and they smote 20 of his men in the road. And as Rubal escaped from the children of Chittim, 
and they did not slay him. He was spooked. And Angius and Lucas, his brother, fled with the rest of their men, and they escaped and came into Africa with terror and consternation. And Angius feared all the days Lee Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, should go to war with him. So the, uh, the theme of that chapter is, as the occult he put in the chat here, Yah saw Zepho not as an Edomite. He saw him as the seed of Abraham. And in the covenant he made with Abraham, he said, through your loins, many nations will be blessed. And we see that through prayer, he just blessed the Edomite to win a war. And this reminds me also of Nimrod when it talked about how he would pray and Yah would bless him at first. But then he wouldn't give Yah the glory and he would use that to do whatever it was he wanted to do. And we're going to see Zepho do kind of something very similar to that. But any comments, anything anybody want to add about Yasher chapter 63 um, before we move forward? It's a lot of chapters in here about Zepho, which says to me he's, he done played a big part in history that we don't just don't know because they didn't change these names in history. But if you think, We've been talking about Zepho since like chapter 58 or something, 57. It's been multiple chapters about him. And I do believe it's a reason for that. Anything, anybody want to add any comments, questions before we move on? Y'all delivered Zepho, an Edomite who had, who hit, who, 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 by his own words, Israel was his sworn enemy. And he stood on it all the days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Akobadai, you want to pick up some of this reading? Chapter 64. Sure. Jasher, chapter 64, and... Uh... Balaam, the son of Beor, was at the time with Angus in battle. And when he saw Zepho prevail over Angus, he fled from there and came to Chittim. Mm. And, Zepho, and Zepho and the children of Chittim received him with great honor. And Zepho knew uh, Balaam wisdom. Uh, and Zepho gave unto Balaam uh, many gifts and he remained with him. And when Zepho had returned from the war, he commanded all the children of Chittim to be numbered who had gone into battle with him. And behold, not one was missing. See, that's a that's a great prayer because that's how y'all do Israel, right? When we was praying and going into battle, it was like they slayed 100,000 men and nobody died. Like, that's the lesson of this today. No matter who you is, if you got faith in Yah, if you pray to the Most High Yah, you just never know what kind of mountain he'll move. Verse four. And Zepho rejoiced uh, at, th at this thing, and he renewed his kingdom, and he made a feast unto his subjects. But Zepho remembered not the Lord. That's his problem right there. And remember, when we read about Nimrod, he said the same thing. Before Nimrod started the tower, when he would fight those battles, he would pray. And Yah would bless him, but he would remember not Yah. He would go on from that to do wicked. And that's when you mystery Babylon and you your cup run over with that wrath when you're living like that. Same as these nations he's called to um, inflict punishment on us. I've called you for that, but you didn't got to doing too much and you'd have forgot me. And that's the punishment in the end to come. I'm sorry, do chapter, verse five over. Okay, uh, but Zepho remembered not Yah and considered not that the uh, Yah had helped him in the battle, <laughs> in battle, and that he had delivered him and his people from the hand of king of the king of Africa, but still walked in the way of the children of Chittim and the wicked children of Esau to serve other gods, <laughs> which his brother, the children of Esau, had taught him. It is therefore said, 
from the wicked. Oh, I think I'm gonna have to give it some. I'm, I'm, uh, I got I'm, it. Okay. He walked in the ways of the children of Chittim and the wicked children of Esau to serve other gods, which his brethren, the children of Esau, had taught him. It is therefore said, from the wicked goes forth wickedness. And he's talking about Esau's disdain for the covenant and the understanding of the Most High Yah, which he would have been raised in by Isaac. This is why it's important for us to raise our children in the way. Um, and hey, all right. And the hope it stick. What's going on? Hey, I you know said from the wicked go forth wicked. That was what was said about uh, Nimrod's son. Him as well. Yeah, the same thing was said about Nimrod's son. Him as well. Hallelujah. Verse six. And Zepho reigned over all the children of Chittim securely, but knew not the Most High, who had delivered him and all his people from the hand of the king of Africa. And the troops of Africa came no more to Chittim to plunder as usual. For they knew of the power of Zepho who had smitten all at the edge of the sword. They might have should have went back up there and tried him one more time. He didn't know Yah. Yah might have punished him and gave him over into their hands for that. But they wouldn't have knew that because they wasn't following Yah. But so Angus was afraid of Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, and the children of Chittim all the days. At that time, when Zepho had returned from the war, and when Zepho had seen how he prevailed over all the people of Africa and had smitten them in battle at the edge of the sword, then Zepho advised the children of Chittim to go to Egypt to fight with the sons of Jacob and with the Pharaoh king of Egypt. And that Balaam he got here is the soothsayer, I believe, um, when Moses comes back into Egypt. So in this history that ain't taught, look at this connection. Zepho got a hatred for Israel. So if Balaam up there and it said he received him with honor because he knew his wisdom, he probably talked with him every day about how much he didn't feel Israel and they killed Esau and Jacob really stole that, all that, that, all that from um our father. And so it makes sense why Balaam would be so apt to be down there trying to recreate these things of their Elohim, um, knowing full well he was not doing what Yah was doing. And now we see a roadmap even to his story that's going to play in shortly here. But Zepho heard that the mighty men of Mitzrayim were dead and that Yosef and his brethren, the sons of Jacob, were dead and that all the children, the children of Yasharal, remained in Egypt. And Zepho considered to go to fight against them in all Egypt to avenge the cause of his brethren, the children of Esau, whom Yosef with his brethren and all Egypt had smitten in the land of Canaan when they went up to bury Jacob and Hebron. So it says Zepho considered to go fight against them in Egypt. So now just think, everybody like, no, nah, we ain't gonna mess with Yehuda and them. So Zepho plight now is all oh, them dead. We got the kids. They ain't them. They ain't Ishakar. They just the sons of Nephtali. They ain't Nephtali. They ain't Simeon. Right? And Zepho sent messengers to Hadad, son of of Badai, king of Edom, and to all his brethren, the children of Esau, saying, Did you not say that you would not fight against the king of Africa, for he is a member of your covenant? Behold, I fought with him and smote him and all his people. So <laughs> Zepho wrote back to them. He did. He wrote back tripping this time. And he, uh, he like, no, y'all was acting like that. So now nah, I done stumped him out. You don't even got no covenant no more. He ain't on none. <laughs> now, therefore, I have resolved to fight against Egypt and the children of Yacob, who are there. And I will be revenged of them for what Yosef, his brethren and ancestors did to us in the land of Canaan when they went up to bury their father in Hebron. Now he kind of challenged his brethren. Y'all don't want to fight with Angus. Did y'all y'all not going to fight against Israel either who killed Esau, our grandfather, the patriarch of our family? Now then, if you if you are willing to come to me to assist me in fighting against them and Egypt, then shall we avenge the cause of our brethren. And the children of Esau hearkened to the words of Zepho, so they was with it. And the children of Esau gathered themselves together, a very great people, and they went to assist Zepho and the children of Chittim in battle. And Zepho sent to all the children of the east and to all the children of Ishmael with words like unto these. And they gathered themselves and came to the assistance of Zepho and the children of Chittim in the war upon Egypt. Now think about how cocky he is. Yadin just blessed you. You know it because you were scared. 
you don't honor Yah at all, and you turn right around and you get with Ishmael, a whole bunch of more family, because we know the children of the East is Moab, a bunch of seeds of your cold. Like we finna go try Israel, who they all know Yah has made a covenant with. They're not oblivious to that. Zepho ain't, Ishmael ain't, Moab wouldn't be. All of them know that. Midian ain't even no more. They done stumped them out. But all of these people he talking to would know that. Esau know that. And all these kings, the king of Edom and the children of the east and all the children of Ishmael and Zepho, the king of Chittim, went forth and arrayed all their hosts in Hebron. They kicked it up from Hebron. That's interesting. And the camp was very heavy, extending in length a distance of a three days journey. That's a big army. It take you three days to walk from end to end of the front line. That is a big army. A people numerous as the sand upon the seashore, which cannot be counted. And all the kings and their hosts went down and came against all Mitzrayim in battle and encamped together in the valley of Pathros. And all Egypt heard their report. And they also gathered themselves together, all the people of the land of Mitzrayim and of all the cities belonging to Egypt, about 300,000 men. And all, the, and all Egypt heard their report and they also gathered themselves together all the people of the land of Egypt and all the cities belonging to Egypt, about 300,000 men. So Egypt put out 300,000 men. And the men of Egypt sent also to the children of Yasharal, who were in those days in the land of Goshen, to come to them in order to go and fight with the kings. Mind you, just said that they've been, now they already start oppressing Yasharal. That don't sound like, if that don't sound like this transatlantic slavery, not only do we got you oppressed, we need you to go fight in World War I, II, Vietnam, the American Revolution, and all that with us. <laughs> we need you to go fight with us, knowing we got our boot on your neck. If that don't sound like today. And the men of Yasharal assembled and were about 150 men. We only had such a couple men. And they went into battle to assist the Egyptians. Which say to me, just like them wars here, it was a lot of us who was like, I'm not going to fight with them heathens. You a fool for going to help them. Because it was a lot of that. It was a lot of Ali's who was on. Man, Esau ain't got me. Ain't stole my house and all my land and all my cattle and got us working for free. Esau, ain't, the Viet Cong ain't never called me a nigga. That's what I hear right there. 150 men, you know, it's a few hundred thousand of us, if not millions of us now down there we done been there what it said over 100 years 100 and something years oh it's a lot of us down there and the men of yasharal and egypt went forth about 300,000 men and 150 men and they went toward those these kings to battle and they placed themselves from without the land of goshen opposite pathros and the egyptians believed not in yasharal to go with them in their camps together for battle for all the Egyptians said, perhaps the children of Yasharal would deliver us into the hand of the children of Esau and Ishmael, for they are brethren. And all the Egyptians said unto the children of Yasharal, remain you here together in your stand, and we will go and fight against the children of Esau and Ishmael. And if these kings should prevail over us, then come you all together upon them and assist us. And the children of Yasharal did so. And Zepho, Good old Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, king of, of Chittim, and Hadad, the son of Badad, king of Edom, and all their camps, and all the children of the east, and children of Ishmael, and the people numerous as sand, and camped together in the valley of Pathros, opposite Tak Pontius. I think this appears in Torah too, this place. And Balaam, the son of Beor, the Syrian. So we see Balaam is a Syrian, a Syrian of wisdom who go on to be a soothsayer. He was there in the camp of Zepho, for he came with the children of Chittim to the battle. And Balaam was a man highly honored in the eyes of Zepho and his men. They honoring him because he, he's some soothsayer. He's a prophet unto them, really, probably a fortune teller. 
crystal ball and all. And Zepho said unto Balaam, try by divination for us that we may know who will prevail in the battle, we or the Egyptians. And Balaam rose up and tried the art of divination, and he was skillful in the knowledge of it, but he was confused and the work was destroyed in his hand. And he tried it again, but it did not succeed. And Balaam despaired of it and left it and did not complete it. But this was from the Most High in order to cause Zepho and his people to fall into the hand of the children of Yasharal, who had trusted in, in Yahuwah, the Elohim of their ancestors in war. So we see our people ain't completely fell into the ways of Egypt then yet either, because we still leaning on Yah. Even though only 150 came, knowing it was a couple hundred thousand men down there. <laughs> but only 150 was like, all right, we'll go. And Zepho and Hadad put their forces in battle array. And all the Egyptians went alone against them, about 300,000 men. And not one man of Yasharal was with them. And all the Egyptians fought with these kings opposite Pathros and Tachpanches. And the battle was severe against the Egyptians. And the kings were stronger than the Egyptians in the battle. And about 180 men of Egypt fell on that day, and about 30 men of the forces of the kings. And all the men of Egypt fled from before the kings. So the children of Esau and Ishmael pursued the Egyptians, continuing to smite them unto the place where there was, where was the camp of the children of Yasharal. And all the Egyptians cried unto the children of Yasharal, saying, hasten to us and assist us and save us from the hand of Esau. Ishmael and the children of Chittim. And the 150 men of the children of Yasharal ran from their station to the camps of these kings. And the children of Yasharal cried unto the Most High Yah, their Elohim, to deliver them. So they knew to pray. Something you forgot, Zepho. You should have knew better. Anyway, considering how you just made it to this point. And Yahuwah hearkened to Yasharal and the Most High gave all the men of the kings into their hand. 300,000 to 150. And the children of Yasharal fought against these kings, and the children of Yasharal smote about 4,000 of the king's men. And Yah threw a great consternation in the camps of the kings so that the fear of the children of Yasharal fell upon them. Yeah, they like, dude, you got us down here fighting with Yah people, man. We didn't all... Consider and remember, too, this is not that far. We just seen Yehuda and all them pass away at 137. This still ain't like that far from what Israel was doing to all them nations in Canaan either. So it's like, nah, you got us down here tripping. <laughs> and all the hosts of the kings fled from before the children of Yasharal, and the children of Yasharal pursued them, continuing to smite them unto the borders of the land of Cush. Now, Back to what I was saying about where is Israel. Cush is the father of what we would call an Ethiopian today. We also know that they would consider Saudi Arabia and parts, parts like that in the southern part of what they call the Middle East, which is really Northeast Africa. Cush. That gives us a landmark, right? And the children of Yasharal slew of them in the row, yet 2,000 men. And of the children of Yasharal, not one fell. So Yasharal with 150 then killed 6,000 men already. And when the Egyptians saw that the children of Yasharal had fought with such few men with the kings, yeah, they probably like, dang, what would happen out here if 50,000 of them would have came? This would be over with already. And that the battle was so very severe against them all the Egyptians were greatly afraid of their lives on account of the strong battle. And all Egypt fled, every man hiding himself from the arrayed forces. And they hid themselves in the road, and they left the Israelites to fight. The Egyptians ran off on us. And the children of Yasharal inflicted a terrible blow upon the king's men, and they were returned from them after they had driven them to the border of the land of Cush. And all Yasharal knew the thing which the men of Egypt had done to them, that they had fled from them in battle and had left them to fight alone. So the children of Yasharal also acted with cunning. And as the children of Yasharal returned from battle, they found some of the Egyptians in the road and smote them there. And while as they slew them, they said unto them these words, Wherefore did you go from us and leave us, being a few people, to fight against these kings who had a great people to smite us? 
that you might thereby deliver your own souls. So we like, how y'all, how dare y'all leave us? They coming to fight us, but they coming to take Egypt. And you run. And of some of which the Israelites met on the road, they, the children of Israel, spoke to each other saying, smite, smite, for he is an Ishmaelite or an Edomite or from the children of Chittim. And they stood over him and slew him. And they knew that he was an Egyptian. So they was basically calling them Egyptians who weren't. Something else I find interesting here is all of this is also letting us know why once you get into the time of us being in the land and the judges and all of that, because we fall into servitude under a lot of these nations. You see why these people didn't fill us? Because when we was right with Yah, we was coming through with a mighty hand on these folks. And Yah, I see your hand. Shalom. Shalom. I mean, this, this just shows the power of the covenant that we have with the Most High. And when we're in the right place, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, a little can put a flight to many, like 150 men, you know, and the most high just putting the fear upon them, like, hey, and um, just the whole thing about Zeppo got me like astounded because like Zeppo was straight up tripping, like you just prayed and used the covenant and y'all delivered you from Angus, the king of Africa, and then you're going to turn around and go against his kids. That's like, one of my cousins praying, like, that's like one of the cousins praying, like, oh, uncle, can you come help me? And the uncle's like, yeah, I got you. And then you turn around and be like, all right, now I'm going to go kill my uncle's kids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then the uncle's like, bro, no. And so it's just like, it's just weird that he just, how fast he forgot y'all and how y'all delivered him. And it just shows that he has no regard for the covenant. It was kind of like he was praying and you just using the covenant and just using Yah's covenant because the most high is going, don't come back on his words. His words don't fall short or empty. So when someone prays and with the covenant and you know what I'm saying? And praying like, okay, father, you know, Abba, I'm just going to say this, you know, I'm going to see the Abraham and you said, Abba, you know, and then the most High's words are not going to come back void. So he's like, he kind of like went on behalf of Zepho and the children. And then Zepho turned around and said how I smote it, how I smoked them and that. And and then I like what the, the Israelites did right here. Not that I like it, but they, they was clever by saying, oh, no, smite, smite. He's an Ishmaelite. Or oh, that's an Edomite. Or that's the children of Chittim. It was kind of like they was kind of being kind of... um smart with it for they <laughs> so they uh so if word got back um to to you know to pharaoh it'd be like oh no well he they that hurt them saying it was an ishmaelite and an edomite and so it just looked like those men fell in battle you know what i'm saying when when all the while they knew that it was an egyptian <laughs> true and you know what something you just said that made me think two things is a, when Zepho was praying, he was like the covenant of Abraham and Yitzhak. He didn't say of Esau. And the whole beef with them is because at the burial of Jacob, the seed of Esau came trying to claim that the covenant was theirs and the, and the, and the burial plot was theirs. That's A. And B, which is the reason why I can see this being taken out, B, for them to be able to say, oh, this is an Ishmaelite or this is an Edomite or this is a, 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 somebody from Chittim and it was really an Egyptian shows you how all of these people at this time would have been brown-skinned more than likely too. Because we know from the hieroglyphs the Egyptians have always been depicted as being jet black. So to be able to associate them with an Ishmaelite or an Edomite, they all had to favor or even the children of Kittim, they all had to favor in a way. It couldn't have been like, um, you know what I mean? He couldn't have been down there looking like Jesus Christ. <laughs> and he like, yeah, no, he don't look nothing like the Egyptians. So that's something else that just stood out to me when you was talking. You got anything else before we go on and bring this to a close? Yeah, that man, that's a really good point. I didn't think about it like that because even if it got word, got back to Pharaoh and he looking at the, um, looking at um the israelites like well if the egyptians are you know black and everybody else is white 
it was kind of like when well, when you were slew when you was killing him, you knew he was an Egyptian. So mm-hmm. in this way, it kind of covers him because and it and makes your point because they all had to look alike in order for him to even try to for them to even say, "Oh, smite, smite." You know what I'm saying? Oh, I think it's an Ishmaelite. Oh, I think it's an Edomite. You know what I'm saying? So the, yeah, they all had to look similar and they all had to be of that of that brown complexion. <laughs> for that to fly yeah if, if these people looked like the people in syria or turkey or saudi arabia today pharaoh would have been like we don't look nothing like them we jet black and the hieroglyphs get out of way about egypt all them ancient pharaohs is jet black on the hieroglyphs so they had to be similar for that to even fly hallelujah to bring this to a close, verse 47, and the children of Yasharal did these things cunningly against the Egyptians because they had deserted them in the battle and had fled from them. And the children of Yasharal slew of the men of Egypt, of the men of Egypt in the road in this manner, about 200 men. And all the men of Mitzrayim saw the evil which the children of Yasharal had done to them. So all Egypt feared greatly the children of Yasharal. Yeah, because they know, man, they say it was only 150 of them did that. And they looking over at Goshen or what's left of it that they ain't stole. And it's like, man, they 700,000 deep down there. What happened if we break out to a fight and all of them fight? It's You know what? And that just made me think of today as well. That's the same thing, the fear of Yasharal in the Caribbean and North and South America is today. And this is why the attack has always started from slavery and the colonials to tear down and destroy the men, the lions of Israel, because you think about slavery, you had a slave owner, his children's and a couple hands, it may be 15 of them, and they got 250 slaves in order. And it makes sense why they play, why, why this captivity has played like that as well, to make them feel less than, to make them have a fear or to, to instill a fear with Willie Lynch. Uh, doctrines and all of that to where they never even think in their mind although they greatly outnumber us and they bigger than us, faster than us, stronger than us better fighters than us and better survivors and all of that to put it in their mind to never even think that you can try us go ahead and y'all right that's kind of like the um, the whole little elephant on a chain connected to a chair thing you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying <laughs> that element can snatch that chain off, snatch that chair up and be gone but it's just that that doctrine that fear that was instilled inside that elephant that makes the elephant not uh you know uh fight back but what i was going to say is um that i kind of now i understand because in a word it don't you don't we don't get all this backstory and all this context i didn't really understand why egypt why mitzrayim like why were they so afraid like i know why they was afraid but that was just like it don't really get deep into like, oh, because what the children of Israel did and, and stuff like that. It just be like, oh, because they're multiplied and they're they're greater than us. They it don't really get into like why. And I like I like how Jasher got into why and they saw that, oh wow, 150 of them did that. I could just imagine what they would do with all of them. All of them will come against us and Egypt is dumb for. <laughs> So I, I like how um, Jasher gets into the backstory of what why the fear of us is there because they see that Yah fought with us and they see that the, our Elohim is with us and he comes through. Hallelujah. And I, and just think about if we was in slavery, if we had to just, like the moment that they really start putting hard bondage on us and stuff like that, it's just like if we had to stay pointed towards Yah, and really just, you know, who who could who knows what y'all would have did at that time? We'd have been taking over the world. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, we got to fall into this and fall into unbelief. And then, you know, our people start not really listening. You know, we just, our hard head and sick nerves always get us in trouble with the most high. True. True. And the 400 years had to be completed as well. So y'all probably gave us a, a certain level of a spirit of illusion here too to fulfill that prophecy. Because to your point, like you say, when we first got here, the slaves would have greatly outnumbered the colonials because it would only be so many people on a boat and they would be bringing hundreds of slaves at a time. Um, 
So Yah kind of rocked us to sleep as well to fulfill the 400 year prophecy. Same as he said he did with us here. Yah said that it was his doing that we that they fell into this on the level that they did. Um, so that, uh, you know, his glory can be seen. But to your point, we have come, uh, now that we came out of Zepho a little bit, we you're speaking, we're in Exodus chapter one now, and it says, now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not jo Yosef, which we just passed him. And he said unto his people, behold, the people of the children of Yasharal are more and mightier than we, which episodes like what we just read is why they would think that. 10, come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and they come to pass that when their fall out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us and so get them up out of the land. So that's exactly where we're at that you just read. And now we see why they felt that way because they got this big old army going to get whooped by this other really big old army and then 150 Israelites come through and they kind of like just dominate the army. And after they seen these people killing them and all of that, like it's saying 49 here, and all the men of Mitzrayim saw the evil which the children of Yasharal had done to them. So all Egypt feared greatly the children of Yasharal, for they had seen their great power and that not one man of them had fallen. And this is, that's Exodus chapter one, verse eight, nine and 10, as we just read. So all the children of Yasharal returned with joy on their road to Goshen and the rest of Egypt returned each man to his place. And he was Saudi and he was scared. And he went and told everybody like, bro, they was whooping us, man. 150 Israelites came and killed thousands of them and even killed a bunch of us for running and leaving. Them. That's to your point. Hallelujah. We're going to stop this right here. Anything else anybody want to add or take away from any of this before we go? Ako Badaya, you all right? You all right over there? Yeah, I, I, I uh, got some water and I cleared it up a little bit. Hallelujah. Just check. <sighs> Interesting things. This, 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 and this is why this history, for one, this is a history that's never going to be taught. Um, that probably plays into why these type of books have been tried so hard to be saying that they ain't part of the canon, like like an like a European can tell us that. But so many of us allow Europeans to tell us that even in this walk, a lot of us in and which is always just so funny to me, because you have a lot of Israelites in this walk who, on one hand, will tell you he don't trust nothing about a European. But on the other hand, he'll tell you the only books that he trusted the Bible is the King James Bible, which is what the European told the world are the only books of the Bible you could trust. It's crazy to me, but hallelujah, this is why we have to do this, because we see y'all painting the roadmap. Showed us why Midian is so small. Showed us why Zepho, Balaam, who was going to be this priest to come for um, and go against. Um, I guess I should bring that up too. why I keep saying. Balaam is this priest because scripture tells us his name. Um, scripture tells us his name. Uh, this ain't where it's at, though. But even Revelation 2.14, Hamashiach, but I have a few things against thee because thou hast there them that Hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Yasharal. Um, Jude spoke of him after the era of Balaam for a roar. Um, and then Peter did. But I know it's in Timothy where it says that uh, it talks about them being down in Egypt. I can't even think of where it's at. But another time, I guess, we'll find it because I can't think of the correct. I know it's in Timothy, but I don't know where it's at. Well, anyway, we see why Balaam has this hatred for Israel, and he's going to be working so hard to try to see them in bondage and destroyed. Even after we come out, remembered with the donkey, he's on the donkey. The donkey had to tell him, like, you tripping. It's an angel here to kill you. And he went to get that money from uh, the Moabites, I believe. And then when he got there, y'all was like, you can't curse them. Um, but now we see how his story has played into this. 
as Aniya said, we see why the why the Egyptians are so afraid and 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 feeling away towards Israel. We see why the 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 uh, oppression in Egypt would have started because the the father who knew Yosef told his son when he died, you need to let Yosef still run it. Uh, as Shelly put in the chat earlier, he probably had a hatred for Israel because of that. Um, so when his father died, he started to oppress him just a little bit. And we see it pick up and pick up as the sons die. But it, that would have started there. And then his son come through and he he don't know Yosef and none of them like that. And the, and, and the patriarchs of our nation and died. And he like want to go full throttle with it. And he had a fear of him from seeing these episodes like this. So we see in this history. As we just read it with with, 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 with with eyes to see and ears to hear, hallelujah, that Yah has given us, um, you know, we can see the breadcrumbs. We can see this, the story um, tying together even more. Anything else anybody want to add or any of that before I pray us out? Hallelujah, this was another good read. This was another good read. Hallelujah. Oh, and we seen, we seen, uh, uh, we seen y'all bless the Edomite too, who humbled himself and prayed and y'all stepped in and helped him out, saved his life. That's interesting. Hallelujah. Thanks for all of y'all for coming. So <clears throat> as we humble our hearts and just um, ease our minds and open up, open up our hearts as we humble it to discern the word of Yah and the things that he's saying to us as we um, focus on the throne room of Yah where the, in, where, the, where the incense burn with a sweet smell to represent our prayers, the prayers of the righteous um, as they come into the throne room of Yah. And we first and foremost, is we thank Yah for um, letting your Ruach HaKodesh guide us in all things, Father Yah, to lead us out of delusion and error into truth and righteousness. Um, we humbly ask that Yahushua HaMashiach guides these prayers into the throne room and presents them before the throne of our Elohim, um, Avino, our Father. Um, and he just receives us for, uh, uh, as, as humble servants, uh, Abiyah. Uh, as we bow our knee before the throne, we thank you for your patience and your mercy with us, Father, as we continue to strive towards your perfection, um, knowing that we may fall short of the glory, Abiyah, Abba, but also knowing that um, you are ever with us, Father. Um, we thank you for the breadcrumbs and allowing these stories to come back together for us, um, showing that your hand is stretched to anybody who humbles themselves and pray. Um, that you are not an Elohim based off geographic location or color of skin or any or or of class or of any race, color of creed, but you are an Elohim of Yasharal. But as as uh and in the in the book of Acts, as I want to say, Kepha says, uh, men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and all those who earnestly seek Yah, salvation has come to you. And we understand that it was to the Israelite first and then to the Gentile. But we are we 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 humbly come before the throne to say, Yah, we aren't here to to say who can and can't make it into your kingdom, because we know as we read your scripture, you told Moses, only you will decide. And as we honor our ancestor, we're gonna do it the right way. We're gonna do it the right the way that you dictated it to him, um, which was a guideline of how you're dictating it to us. We thank you, Abiyah, for what you're doing with our children. We pray that you continue to bless them and raise them in your Torah, that you guide them all your days, um, all their days, Abiyah, um, and that you give us all the proper patience and understanding, um, the courage and the strength to um, raise our children in your ways um, to the best of our abilities in this land of captivity where up is down and left is right. Um, but the ancient path has never changed and only you know it. And we just pray that you continue to, to, to let your light, um, the light of the world, guide us on that ancient path as we walk through darkness. Uh, we pray for Ima Bed and her foot, Abiyah, that you strengthen her, Father Yah, and you help her to um, get done what it is that she needs to get done, um, that you heal her up from any aches, um, 
quickly, Father Yah, but in your time as well, um, and that you help her 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 place of rest, her her home to come together, Abba Yah, um, and that you allow her to be a blessing up on everybody in that situation with her that she comes amongst, uh, if it be your holy will. We pray for Ak Obadiah that he read that he can continue to uh, walk in your Torah as well, um, that he's healthy and whole all his days, Abba Yah. Uh, and that you continue to bless him to be a blessing up on all those that he interacts with um, as a as a friend and a brother and as an elder of of all of us in Yasharal. Uh, I pray that you just bless him in all wisdom and knowledge um, pertaining to you and everything that is profitable um, to be a help unto so many, uh, to be a true elder as the scripture uh, tells us to seek the knowledge of the elders and the wisdom. And I pray that you make him a symbol of what that's supposed to look like righteously. And in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, we pray all things. Yah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Ben. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody have a good night. Thank you. Thank you for creating us and once. Shalom. No shalom, problem. Shalom, shalom, Makoti. I'll be in touch. All right. Shalom. Shalom.